welcome back to the A to Z of the 2017 SIHH and we're starting this third and last part with the letter P. Yes, we are starting with Parmigiani Fleurier and 2016 has been a rather tough year for them. Quite a lot of restructuring in the company and therefore this has had a small impact on the novelties presented by the brand here at the SIHH. I think you know how much I like this brand for its true commitment to quality watchmaking and I know it's quite a niche brand. So I really wish them well and I know they will surprise us once again. For instance, we know they are working on a revolutionary escapement system, the Senfine, quickly presented last year. So though it's a quite a traditional brand, it doesn't prevent them of thinking outside the box. I like this. So for this SIHH, their main novelties were the following. First, they introduced the Tori Chronometer, a very classic three-hand watch. It's very refined and on the dial side, you will find a large date window at six o'clock. This watch comes with an automatic movement and with two different case finishing, one in white gold, the other in red gold. This is a tribute to the very first watch Michel Parmigiani designed and produced at the very origin of the brand some 20 years ago. The next watch is a steel version of their very well-balanced Tonda 1950. Simple but nice and for this new version, they've just made it a tiny bit larger as it comes in a 40mm case instead of the 39mm seen previously with the gold version. They say they did this to give it a little more masculine feel to it. Parmigiani also introduced a new Tonda 1950 meteorite, but for the first time we see a white finishing for this meteorite dial, something they managed to pull off with a new type of treatment. This watch comes in a titanium case and there are also a blue and a black meteorite version. The brand enjoys a long partnership with car manufacturer Bugatti and 2016 marked the launch of the supercar, the new Chiron. Parmigiani has now come up with a Bugatti Aerolite performance timepiece where you will be able to see the incredible speed performance and acceleration of this car on the tachymeter scale of this flyback chronograph. And finally, they introduced an oval pantograph, that's the timepiece with the magical folding hands following the oval shape of the case as it's, uh, as it's running, you know, it's quite crazy. But here the novelty is that the movement is made out of pure gold, just a little chicer, I guess. Okay, let's now talk briefly about Piaget and we know that the brand is facing quite some difficulties so we didn't see that many crazy novelties at this SIHH and I don't even want to talk about the Polo S collection introduced recently because for me, well, that's clearly not the answer to their problems. On the contrary. Nevertheless, 2017 marks the 60th anniversary of a very iconic watch for them, the Altiplano. They didn't go too crazy for this celebration, but instead introduced a few rather elegant limited editions playing with colors and material. And as a quick reminder, this watch's main characteristic is its ultra thin dimension. When it came out in 1957, the thickness of the original 9P manual winding movement was set at only two millimeter and 2.4 millimeter for the 12P automatic version introduced in 1960. This ultra, ultra plat dimension of their watches really represent an important part of the brand's identity. And now Richard Mille and we dedicated a full report to their new timepieces so you know what to do if you want to know all of the details about these watches. As this year's focus was set on the RM50-03, the lightest split second chronograph ever made weighing only 40 grams, strap included and only 7 grams for the movement alone. This has been achieved by the extensive use of carbon and titanium, but also with the introduction of a new material called graphene or graph TPT in the Richard Mille vocabulary. And I wouldn't be too surprised to see the use of this material in some future RM watches. Well, actually, I'm pretty sure they are already working on it. And as a quick additional info, this material is also used by the McLaren F4 uh, in their F1 cars, making the partnership between Richard Mille and the sport car manufacturer a very tangible one. And Finally, well, the discovery of this uh, graphene material simply got the scientific team from the Manchester University the Nobel Prize of Physics for it. Yes, as simple as that. Let's now talk about Roger Dubuis and this one is going to be real, real short because one of brand's major announcement at the SIHH is their partnership with a tire manufacturer which enabled them to come out with a new rubber strap. Well, you get the point. So next brand, please, and hopefully we'll be able to say a bit more 
next year because there are some nice models with their very own and distinctive double tourbillons for instance. And now Ulysse Nardin and it was the brand's first participation at the SIHH and unfortunately I won't be able to talk too long about them too, but uh, not for the same reasons. We simply didn't have time to go over their main novelties and I clearly hope we'll be able to do so because Patrick Hoffman, CEO of the brand, took me a few minutes in his office to show me very very quickly a few things they were presenting and there were some very 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 cool stuff. For me, Ulysse Nardin is quite a strange brand and I have a few issues regarding the design of some of their watches. But like I've always said, uh, tastes are personal and subjective and no one holds the truth. What I like, maybe you don't and vice versa. But when it comes to technique and innovation, well, there is a lot to be said about Ulysse Nardin. They have been pioneers in many different fields of horology and some 10 years ago they introduced the InnoVision with 10 incredible innovations, 8 of which are found in today's watches uh, of the brand. So this year they presented the InnoVision 2. Again, 10 crazy innovations, but I won't go over them. I know it feels a bit uh, frustrating, I just hope we'll be able to we'll have the opportunity to do a special on this because it seriously deserves it. Uh, as well, well, they also presented the first a really clever regatta watch I've come across and uh, yeah, I know it's a little bit frustrating. Hopefully we'll manage to compensate this soon. Urwerk are celebrating their 20th anniversary this year and they are the ones that triggered this independent watchmaking scene that we love so much. As a celebration piece, they introduced the URT8, combining much of their identity in one timepiece. An upgraded uh, satellite hour indicator mechanism, plus a very original reversing system, but again, full report to be seen with the link below. Let's now talk about Vacheron Constantin, and we will focus on one single timepiece, because what a timepiece. Following the development of uh, the most complicated watch ever manufactured, the reference 57260 and its crazy 57 complication, well, Vacheron took some of that know-how and, and introduced an incredible timepiece called the Cabinotier Astronomica Grande Complication. This watch took five years of development, holds 23 complications and is made up of 500 components. It's an integrated caliber, meaning that everything has been thought of from the start and it's uh, not the addition of modules that enable them to achieve this spectacular performance. The result is that the movement is only 8.7 thick and could therefore be encased in a wristwatch. With that many complications and therefore indication, well, it's a two-sided watch to hold all of them and remain legible. I will come back just on a few uh, of these complications I found really interesting. Otherwise, I think this video could be 20 minutes long. So naturally, this watch features a perpetual calendar with a practical sunset sunrise indicator found at 6 o'clock. It also holds a clever tide indicator at 11 o'clock, but uh, what I like the best concerns the equation of time, something generally quite complicated to read and understand. Well, here they've done uh, is that they've added a special gold minute hand that shows you in real time the actual sun time. You have a regular minute hand that gives you uh, time as we're used to, meaning with equal and linear increments. But this special hand will either, either precede or be in front of this regular minute hand depending on the date and you will therefore be able to view and grasp very simply and immediately the variation of solar time. So quite neat, I have to say. This is a unique timepiece, reason why it is in the Cabinetier collection, where they only do one-offs. And one last thing, it holds six barrels, giving this watch 21 days of power reserve quite impressive. And finally, let's talk about Van Cleef and Arpels, who got us used to some rather poetic timepieces of the years. And again, they did not deceive us, with probably one of the most nicest and an interesting watch on display at this edition of the SIHH. This watch is the Lady Arpels Papillon Automate, and we know that the brand likes butterflies and other nice little insects. And this time, they actually brought to life a charming little butterfly inside the watch. You will find a small hour and minute indication at two o'clock, but it's the animation which is, uh, which is really quite something. But before talking about it, I just wanted to add that it's also a naturally a fine display of artistic craftsmanship with, for instance, something I had not seen before with this curved plique à jour enamel giving a further sense of 3D within the dial. So let's now talk about the real fun stuff because this butterfly flaps its wing but it does so erratically throughout the hour and that's really the nice touch to this Automata watch. It doesn't do so every five minutes but erratically 19 times per hour. How cool is that? Well, in addition to that, the wearer can activate this function whenever she wants. Yes, this is a feminine piece. 
by pressing a push button, but the cool part doesn't stop there. This watch holds two barrels, one for the time and one for the automata. Okay, everything's still pretty straightforward. But depending on the wearer's activity, meaning if you're moving and gesticulating a lot, like me for instance, sorry, then the automata will perform its little trick more often than the 19 times I mentioned before and up to 40 to 50 times per hour. It will uh, do so because it has more energy charging up the barrel. But despite this, the flaps of the wings will remain constant and not become too crazy as it's all fueled up. And the last nice little thing, this automata, this automata function works a little bit like a power reserve indicator, meaning that when the energy is real low, then the butterfly will flap less time than the 19 times. And if you wind up your watch, the butterfly will constantly flap during this operation and will stop when it's fully charged. Well, wasn't that cool? And this watch, well, it's a numbered edition, so not limited and part of the collection. I don't want, I don't know the price, didn't even want to ask, just didn't want to spoil the magic. And at the very end with Funcliff and Arpels, they presented a much bigger automata, the Automat Fee Ondine, with its wonderful animated fairy and water lily sitting on undulating water. This is incredible object showcasing so many different crafts and it's just a pure pleasure to look at. Years in the making, but the result is spectacular, poetic, wonderful. And yes, it also gives time with this cute little love bug found at the bottom of this incredible automata. Well, this is it for our coverage of the SIHH. I know that there were still a few brands that we didn't talk about from the Carré des Horlogers, such as the very original Belgium Ressens, who came with a more elegant version of their super original watch. We didn't talk about Carré Boutilainen, that we love uh, so much, or Laurent Ferrier, but we really did our best, and the idea of this A, A to Z came while uh, we were at the SIHH, reason why we unfortunately didn't have all our own image to cover this great event in this A to Z. But this SIHH will not be totally over for us as in our next prime time I will come back with some kind of analysis and opinion about what we saw. And if you want to share anything with us by then, well, just keep commenting, we love it. So see you real soon, thanks for your time.